Nelson Mandela, the grandfather of South Africa, is of course well known and well respected throughout the world. And one man had unprecedented access to the leader, Richard Stengel. He's the editor of Time Magazine and the author of Mandela's Way: Fifteen Lessons on Life, Love, and Courage. Thank you so much for your time today. Great to be here. Thank you. Now, when you first approached this iconic leader, what kind of questions and what kind of information did you seek, and did that change the more time you spent with him? It it did. I mean, I I first worked with him back in ninety two and ninety three and ninety four on his autobiography, and I spent you know a couple of years with him, hours every day by his side, and and it was a unique opportunity to spend you know this intimate time with one of the greatest. Leaders and figures of the 20th century, and so you know, ever since that time, I, I mean, I kept a diary and journal at the time, and I wanted to take what I learned from him and what I saw and kind of distill it to its essence. and And that's what Mandela's way is. It's kind of a memoir of of working with him, and also the the, the lessons that he has to teach as a, as a leader and as a man. Now, was there anything you learned that you that surprised you? Well, one of, the first les- lesson is um, uh, courage is not the absence of fear, um, and and by that I mean you know one of the things that surprised me early on in, in talking to him when he was talking to me about his life, he would say you know I was I was very afraid you know when in prison when the guard almost hit me, and I was terrified when I was meeting this figure who was a rival, and he would constantly say say that he that he'd been scared or fearful about things. And I thought, oh my God, you know, Nelson Mandela, this great hero, being scared and fearful, who would have who would have thought? But that but that's the point really, and that's what he would say is that is that courage is not the idea that you don't feel the fear at all. Courage is this way of, of compensating for it and pretending to be brave even when you're not, and that becomes real bravery. And that is something that, that he taught himself and that is something that we can all learn too. Yeah, that's great, because I think sometimes when we idolize people and we think these are these perfect godlike people, but it's great to know that they're humans just like us. Yes, absolutely. And he would say the same thing. Now, for you personally, what what was kind of the greatest lesson that you learned? Well, the, the, the greatest lesson that I learned, in, in fact, is, is, is a little bit like what you said, is that, is that even, the, even these extraordinary people, and he's one of the most extraordinary people who ever lived, or, you know, have the same kind of ordinary concerns and fears and anxieties that, that we all do have. And, and what makes them different is that they, that they can somehow triumph over them. They can somehow learn to live with them. And that's a great lesson for everybody. And that's one of the, one of the lessons that, that I learned, and to try to live and think in some ways like Nelson Mandela does. I mean, we can't all be Nelson Mandela, Lord knows, and I wouldn't want people to have to spend 27 years in prison to become Nelson Mandela, but but there are things that we can take from him and apply them in our everyday lives. Now, you say he had a specific four-word answer to, to how prison changed him. What was that? You know, I used to always ask him, you know, how was the man who went into prison different from the man who came out? And, you know, he was... 46 when he came in, and he was, I think, 72 when he came out, and that's a long, long time. And and um, and prison, in many ways, was his great teacher. And and one day, after me asking the question, you know, for the I don't know the tenth time, he finally said, "I I came out mature." And by that, he means I think that he learned he learned self control in prison. He learned to modulate uh, himself. He learned. Uh, you know, not to fly off the handle, um, not to be over emotional, and and that's that's something that we can all apply in our lives. I mean, and and we don't you know have to be subjected to what he was subjected to to learn it. And some of us, I think, are blessed with it naturally. Um, but he had to learn it, and the fact that he, this great man, had to learn it is is, is a is a lesson for us too. That there's there's much that we can do to to change and improve ourselves. And do you think we we have an accurate picture of who he is? I and mean, we've seen movies, we've seen Morgan Freeman portray him. Um, do you think something is missing, or do we have a, a clear look at what kind of leader he is? No, I think. I mean, part of the reason I wrote the book too is that we have this. You know, we sort of look at him uh, as this almost Santa Claus figure, this kindly, grandfatherly, benign figure. And I and I think one of the things that I wanted to do, and I know you know he believes this too, is that. You know, he wants people to see him for who he really is and who he really was. And he had a, you know, extremely difficult life, and and he had to make many difficult decisions. And in fact, he led the 
you know, the military wing of, of, his, of his revolutionary struggle when he was a young man. And, and, you know, we don't necessarily think that or know that about him. But, and he wants people to realize that he was a, he's not so much an idealist, but a pragmatist. And he was a pragmatist that had a, had a, had a very idealistic goal, but he would do pretty much whatever it took to, to get to that goal. So why did you feel a need to write this book now? And how do you want the readers to respond? Well, he, you know, this is the 20th anniversary of, of him being released from prison. He's now 91. Um, you know, he's not a figure on the world stage anymore. And I thought that, you know, that there were, that this was a good time to kind of teach some of those lessons that I learned. And, and I think it's, you know, in the larger political world, it's so, you know, the, you know, politics is so polarized these days, and, and there seems to be nobody listening to each other and no accommodation or moderation that I think it's a, you know, I think Mandela is a good model for, for political leaders to be able to, you know, cross over to the other side to, to, to figure out how to work with people that you're opposed to, to, to see the good in others, which is something that he always did, and, and to kind of try to move forward with what unites us rather than what divides us. A lot of very powerful lessons. The book is called Mandela's Way, 15 Lessons on Life, Love, and Courage. Richard Stengel, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. And for more information on the new book, go to our website at kcbs.com slash community corner.